Well, there was a lot of celebration yesterday over the news out of Moderna about positive early results of a very small vaccine study. The fact is, if history is a guide, we could still be years away from having something widely available. Most of the vaccines we use today for things like HPV and chickenpox had taken a decade or more to come up with due to how the testing is typically done. So how do we speed up the process? In a recent Boston Globe op-ed, the founding head of the Division of Medical Ethics at NYU and weekly contributor to my favorite radio show, Boston Public Radio, Arthur Kaplan made the case for deliberately giving people coronavirus if it would speed up development of a vaccine. Art, it's great to see you. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me. So I know it hasn't been done with this pandemic, but it's been done in the past in other emergencies. Make the case for deliberately infecting people, Art. Well, look, if you wait for the usual uh, pathway, it means you wait for nature to infect people after you give them the experimental vaccine. And that takes years. You're kind of hoping against hope that they get infected. You're kind of telling them at the same time to follow good uh, hygiene, don't expose yourself to the virus, you're undercutting the very experiment you're trying to run. If you deliberately give people a purified form of the virus, you can cut the number of people down significantly, you know they're infected, you could take months if not years off of this, and you get good, solid, reliable data because you got them right under observation the whole time. But there's a guy, a doctor, I think his name is Leahy, wrote a piece in the New York Times on the other side of this, almost the same time you had written yours, hearkening back to the 70s with the swine flu and some horrible paralytic neurological disease that was a side effect. And it also fueled mistrust of vaccines, which I know is one of your great concerns. So doesn't the potential negative outweigh the positive? It doesn't. The swine flu disaster under President Ford basically was a manufacturing problem, Jim. It wasn't on the research side. So they rushed it through the approval process, but then they gummed it up in making it. And I'm still worried about that happening, even if we get a, uh, a vaccine that looks good. Look, here, what's going to happen is you got significant risk, but you try to recruit young people people who are not likely to die, I think the risk would be less than, say, donating a kidney or somebody who's donating a lobe of liver to somebody. So you can tamp down the likely risk. I know there are unknowns. And I think uh, get this done with a minimum of danger. Okay, one more uh, uh, vaccine-related ethical question. There was a recent poll the first week of May in which 25% of Americans said it was not likely or not likely at all that they would uh, get the vaccine should it be developed. Would it be unethical for governments to force the American people to get a vaccine, whether they want it or not? Well, not in my view. You've got a plague. If you want to come out, you want to restore the economy, you want to protect health at the same time, the vaccine is the way to do it. But I'll tell you what's more likely than that, knowing America, we'll probably see companies require it to come to work. We'll probably see sports teams say you can't come in the stadium until you show me your vaccine certificate. You can't sit in the audience for this show and applaud the host unless you prove you've been vaccinated. You know, it's going to be the private sector that drives yeah. the mandate, I suspect, more than government. So let's move to another potentially dangerous situation, a drug that, at least as far as I know, has no proven benefit. It does have side effects, potentially cause heart problems. Is it ethical for a doctor to prescribe that drug? And in this case, the patient happens to be the president of the United States. And obviously, we're talking about hydroxychloroquine. Did that doctor violate any ethical obligation to his patient? I think they did, or he did, or she did, whoever the White House physician is now. I can't keep up with a turnover. But whoever gave the prescription is not following safe medical practice. That drug is a danger to people who are overweight, the president, older, the president. And it's only been shown in terms of use as a preventative to have risk of heart problems. So why you would indulge this uh, man and say, okay, I'll write the script. I don't know. At least he didn't call him morbidly obese like Nancy Pelosi did last <laughs> night. You know, 
I don't know what you make of this. Uh, you probably have heard that this happened today. Last month, the FDA advised consumers against taking hydroxychloroquine. And yesterday, what a coincidence, the day after the president announced he's taking, the FDA says that taking it is, quote, ultimately a choice between patients and their health care provider. Totally cooked, I would assume. Is that a fair statement? I would say about 150 mm, percent. I okay. mean, it's ridiculous that they issued that opinion. Obviously, it's true. Doctors prescribe drugs that are out there and approved for their patients all the time, but they don't take unnecessary risks for no benefit. And that's what's going on here. Plus, Jim, people are going to look at this and they're going to say, the president's taking it, then I'm going to take it. You know what? I don't need a mask. I don't need social distancing. I'm just going to swallow this pill just like the unmasked non-socially distancing president. I won't even ask about the ethics of the president. You know, finally, speaking of the FDA cooking the books, you and I have talked about this with Marjorie on the radio. I want to talk about the ethics of public health experts who silently sit by when things like this happen. I know that you know Fauci and respect him, but when the Fauci's and the Burks's and the Redfield's and the others just sit there, mute, essentially, when dangerous public health policy is being enunciated, both action and words, by the president. Do they have an ethical obligation to speak up, to step down to anything? I think they do. By the way, I think the Surgeon General is a hostage somewhere. I don't know what city, but we haven't heard from him either. Um, so I think you've, at this point, with the attacks on Bright, Fauci becoming nothing but a memory in terms of policy, it's time for a little saber rattling and say, if we don't get the science back, if we don't get uh, unrestrained, uncensored input from the science community, then how about we have some resignations or at least a day of protest? And I'm not just talking about federal scientists. I mean, across the board, all scientists. All I can say is amen. Talk to you tomorrow on the radio, Art Kaplan. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Great to see you.